Hi everyone and welcome to another video with me. I'm Coach Sierra. I'm here with Academic Coaching for World Changers and welcome to our YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about the normal distribution, which is also known as the normal bell curve. You may have seen in a different video that I was talking about a positively skewed distribution and a negatively skewed distribution, and that is different from a normal distribution or, or a normal bell curve. So today we're going to specifically emphasize and talk about what is the normal bell curve and the normal distribution. As a brief reminder, there are three types of distributions you will see in your exam. You will, or possibly see in your exam, you will see the normal bell curve or the normal distribution, the positively skewed distribution and the negatively skewed. The key difference between these three are where the mean, median and mode all line up. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but just for those who have seen that video and are moving into this video, in a normal bell curve or a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode all line up in the middle. The mean, median, and mode are also called the measures of central tendency. They line up in the middle. In a positively skewed distribution, the mean is on the right side. So we say that the mean is higher than the median and mode. And in a negatively skewed distribution, the mean is on the left side. So we say that the mean is lower than the median and the mode. If you're not sure what the mean, median, and mode is, I'll add another quick review in there just because I really want you all to really get this material. Remember that the mean is the average, the median is the middle number, and the mode is the most frequently occurring number or the top of the curve. Okay, so why is the normal distribution also called the normal bell curve? What's happening? What's going on here? Well, the bell curve is the shape of it. As you see here on this image to the right, the bell curve is the shape. It's shaped like a bell curve, like a bell, like ding, 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 ding. It's Christmas time uh, where I'm at, I guess where everyone is. Um, I'm located outside of the States, but when you think of a bell, like ding, 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 um, this is a bell. So the normal distribution is essentially a theory that says we like to gravitate towards the mean. You may have heard of the phrase regression towards the mean. We like to be average. We as a people, as a society, like to navigate towards the middle, towards the average, the mean. Okay, in a normal bell curve, the mean, the median, and the mode all line up. So if I'm saying towards the middle, towards the average, I'm saying the same thing because the mean, the median, and the mode all line up in the middle for a normal bell curve or a normal distribution. So the normal distribution is essentially a theory, and this theory demonstrates itself in a graph or an image of the normal bell curve. And I've seen test questions use these interchangeably, so I just want you all to be prepared for both. So going off the study guide that we have here, I've made the study guide. You'll receive access to the study guide if you book a session with us, Academic Coaching for World Changers. I give these out through my individual sessions that we have. And I think this, this particular document is really useful because it has some extra images and gives um, a little bit of extra wording that makes the research and assessment section come alive. We've heard before that sometimes the section is really hard to understand because it's like learning a whole new language. Um, and that is true at times, but it's totally understandable. So let's talk about it. So the normal distribution is a tool, also known as a graph or an image, that allows us to compare scores of individuals. If you see a question that asks you the purpose of the normal bell curve and the normal distribution, it's so that we compare, so we can compare test results of individuals. How do we compare them? Well, we compare those scores using standard scores and standard deviations. We'll go into that in a moment. The normal distribution or the normal bell curve is represented by a bell-shaped curve. Ding, 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 ding. And it's symmetric. Symmetric means it's equal on both sides. So if we were to cut that curve in half, it would be 50% on one side and 50% on the other. The whole bell curve itself equals 100%. This is really important to know because as you're learning the 68, 95, 99 rule, you'll understand, oh, if the whole curve equals 100% as we move out, this is where those percentages are coming from. So if I were to split that curve in the middle, it would be 50-50 on both sides. It has a peak in the middle that narrows towards the edge. We know that peak is in the middle because we know that the mean, median, and mode of a bell curve are in the middle. The mode always drives where the peak of the curve is because it's the most frequently occurring number. 
The curve is symmetric because of the peak, also known as the mode, and divides the distribution in half. So if they ask why is the bell curve symmetrical, it's because the mean, median, and mode, also known as the measures of central tendency, all line up there in the middle. Okay, so we mentioned earlier standard scores. This is possible, it's possible to compare scores because of standard scores and standard deviations. So let's talk about what standard scores are. Standard scores are Z scores and T scores. That's a possible test question. What are standard scores, Z scores and T scores? Standard scores are scores that have the same unit of measurement. So what we mean by that is standard scores come from another set of scores called raw scores. Raw scores are scores that do not have the same unit of measurement or are not comparable. Okay. So these scores are derived from raw scores. Standard scores are also considered transformed scores because they have been transformed from their raw score state. The reason why I'm using this other language is because you could see a test question that says, what is another name for standard scores? And you need to know the process of standard scores. Standard scores come from raw scores. I use the example a lot in my individual classes of, you know when you go to work on Monday and you get to see yourself all done in the mirror and you look at yourself and you're like, ah, I did not wake up this way. The original way that you woke up is called a raw score, like the original form of you, but then you transform yourself into a standard score. On the bell curve, we only see standard scores. We don't see raw scores. Raw scores are just the thing before standard scores. So I use this analogy because no one ever sees your crusty eyes and maybe some snot here, maybe some drool here when you first wake up. No one sees the raw scores. We only see the standardized sense of self that you have at work. So if you're looking as to where to identify the raw score, you will not see the raw score on the bell curve. You just need to know that before there were standard scores, there were raw scores because there could be a question asking you which one of these is, uh, which one of these terms is most similar to standard scores? So you might see derived scores. Derive means come from. These standard scores do derive from raw scores. Or you might see transform scores. These scores are transformed because they were once raw scores and transformed into standard scores. Okay. This is also in other resources. I'm just also providing actual explanation here as well. Once they have been transformed, we express the score's distance from the mean using a standard deviation. So raw scores don't have standard deviations at all. These scores have, been then, have then been transformed into standard scores. Once they've been standardized, they now use a term called standard deviations. Standard deviations tells us the unit we move away from the mean or the distance from the mean. So if you're still lost, I'm gonna say that all again. We talked about how the normal bell curve is also known as the normal distribution. This is based off a theory that we like to fall in the middle. The thickest part of the curve is in the middle. And as we move away from the middle, the curve begins to thin out. Why do we have this image? Because it allows, allows us to compare scores. We use this image in real life when we're talking about IQ, when we look at height of men and women, the majority of us fall towards the average. And as we move out, it gets thinner and thinner meaning it's less likely to be seen on the extremes of the curve. We are allowed to compare scores using standard scores. Like the reason why we can use this image to compare scores is through standard scores and standard deviations. Standard scores are z-scores and t-scores that come from raw scores. Raw scores are the original form of data. Now, when I talk about the original form of data and they don't have the same unit of measurement, if you're jumping your eyes down to here, what I mean by that is when you think about the NCE, the NCE has different passing rates for each state. So let's say, you know, for Georgia, the passing rate is 95 and New York, the passing rate is 98. So if I'm a researcher and I'm serving on the board for the NCE and I see that someone has made a 96, what do I do with that number? Because in one state you pass, but in another state you fail. So these scores are really convenient to look at when you're looking within the state. But if I'm looking at a national scale, 
I can't use these numbers because there's not a similar bottom number or denominator, the same unit of measurement. So this is now considered a raw score because this 96 to be particular is now considered a raw score because I can't compare them. So I'm going to standardize these scores so that I can compare them. So then this 96 will evolve into a Z score and T score and allow me to make comparisons between scores across the US. All right, so that's what we mean by not having the same unit of measurement. Once these scores have been transformed, we now get a standard deviation. A standard deviation tells us the unit we move away from the mean. For those of you who have been studying Z-scores and T-scores, you might have heard this language before, that a Z-score has a standard deviation of 1 and a T-score has a standard deviation of 10. What that means is when we move away from the mean, remember that the mean lines up in the middle, we move in units of 1 for a Z-score. When we move away from the mean for a T-score, we move in units of 10. Okay. Now, standard deviations line up with the 68, 95, 99 rule. These two things go together. The 68, 95, 99 rule is a way that we can interpret the normal bell curve. Now that we've hit this, I want to go back to this image that I've kind of skipped over here. That way, this Venn diagram makes a little bit more sense. So here we have the bell curve slash normal distribution. This is the center. We know that it's symmetrical or symmetric, equal on both sides. We know that the mean, median, and mode all line up in the middle. We know that it's interpreted using the 68, 95, 99 rule. We know that it's not the same as negatively skewed or a positively skewed distribution because the mean, median, and mode don't all line up in a skewed distribution. We know it's made up of standard scores, which are z-scores and t-scores and standard deviations. There are other types of standard scores, by the way. You might see STAY nines, which stand for standard nines, but that's typically its own test question. If you see which one of these are standard scores, they're talking about Z-scores and T-scores. It allows us to compare standard scores and standard deviations. So the normal distribution graph or image allows us to make comparisons. All right. So here we are back to the 68, 95, 99 rule. This rule is used to interpret the normal distribution. The 68, 95, 99 rule is based on the mean and the standard deviation. It says that 68% of the population is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of the population is within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99% of the population is within three standard deviations of the mean. 68, 95, 99, with that mean being in the middle. I'm pausing for a moment because I think some of you might be like, what is she talking about? So let's keep going. All right, here's another word. This is an image that I drew. We'll explain it in just a moment. So most observations fall within one deviation of the mean, 68%. That is the thickest section. If the whole bell curve equals 100% and 68% of us fall within one deviation, that's saying that we like to be in the middle. We like to regress towards the mean. We like to be average. If you want to move away from average, you got to work really, really, really hard for it because there's like this gravitational pull to be towards the middle. Even fewer observations when we move out or towards 95, like the curve starts to get thinner and even fewer for 99. Now, this is an image that I drew. If you are looking for a, the the I guess you want to say the typical image of a normal bell curve. Let me show you here. One moment. So this is the image that you might see in the Helwig book or in other resources that are displaying the normal bell curve. The image that I drew is just cutting off uh, right after the T-score. So here we see a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one showing that the unit we move away from the mean is one. For a T-score, we have a mean of 50, that's our starting point, and a standard deviation of 10. When we move away from the mean, we move in units of 10. We move below the mean in units of 10 as well for a T-score, we move below the mean in units of one as well. So I say that to say, I don't want you to think that the standard deviation is just when we move positive. 
A standard deviation by definition is the unit we move away from the mean, whether it's positive or negative. So you can see here in this image, as well as in the image that I drew, when we move away from the mean, it's called the standard deviation. The key difference between a z-score and t-score, which are on the normal bell curve, that's why we're talking about it, is that a z-score has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and a t-score has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. I also drew it here in this box. For some people, the box is a little bit easier to understand than the image. I'm a quite visual learner, so I have it both ways. But what you need to know for the exam, for those asking in your head, like, okay, where, what is the key part here? You need to know, one, what the difference is between a normal bell curve and a positively skewed and a negatively skewed distribution. Where does the mean, median, and mode line up for a normal bell curve? What are standard scores? And what is the key difference between z-scores and t-scores? You also need to know and understand the 68, 95, 99 rule. The whole curve equals 100% and 68% falls within negative one to positive one. 95% falls within negative two to positive two and 99% falls within negative three and positive three. That's the same thing for a t-score. So you might be thinking, hold on, hold on, hold on. How can 68% fall within 40 and 60 and negative one and positive one? Even though it's the same distance, if you look here, negative one to positive one is the same distance as 40 to 60. So this would be 68%, this would be 95%, and this would be 99%. How they got these numbers was they simply added the percentages. 34 plus 34 equals 68. 34 plus 34 plus 13.59 plus 13.59 equals 95. 2.14 plus 13.59 plus 34.13 plus 34.13 plus 13.59 plus 2.4 equals 99%. And that's how they came up with the 68, 95, 99 rule. This is also mentioned in the Hel book, Helwig book if this is your primary source of learning above. Counselors should be familiar with the distribution of scores within the normal bell curve, 68, 95, 99. But I also drew it out here for us in this image that's being shown in this video. If you also book an individual session with me, you can also receive access to the study guide, the 68, 95, 99 rule. Now I wanted to give the example of, it's like saying that seven days is one week. If you don't know your units, you might think ah, seven days, seven is so much bigger than one. But then when you understand that seven days is one week, it makes sense that negative one to positive one can also be 40 to 60, it's the same distance. The reason why I'm emphasizing both is because you might be asked about the 68, 95, 99 rule for a Z-score and a T-score. Z-score and a T-score. All right. So in summary, everyone, that is the normal bell curve in the normal distribution. That is the 68, 95, 99 rule. We talked about the measures of central tendency. We talked about the difference between negative skew and positive skew. We talked about other resources where you can find more information. And I wanna thank you all so much for coming to this video. Have a lovely day. Of course, you can always email drpam2020 at gmail.com. If you're interested in joining our services, we have bundles, we have packages. We also have a website as well. And of course, our good old faithful YouTube channel. But again, if you have any questions, you can email drpam2020 at gmail.com. Have a great day, everyone. Great to see you all.